This is TG with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to the channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And today we're going to be overclocking the GTX 1650 um, Super. And this is one of my favorite entry-level cards into uh, AAA gaming. Um, this this card this is a supplemental video um, of a of my gaming series in, in my gaming video one series on how to get into AAA gaming at $300 to $350 or less and how to game at 60 frames per second in high or ultra high mode. Um, and so the reason why I created this video is because in AAA gaming, especially with these cards, this is like a bare minimum card that I would, I would uh, uh, get people into AAA gaming along with the RX 580. Um, we really need to overclock this. It gives us a little bit of bump in our frames per second. This card is very easy to overclock. It runs cool overclocked. Um, and you will gain anywhere from 4 to, to 10 frames per second or higher, uh, depending on the game. Now, that when you overclock a card, it doesn't mean that you're going to uh, get uh, those kind of gains in every game you're playing. It depends on the game uh, that you're playing. And so, uh, but the card is easy to, like I said, the card is easy to overclock. Um, now, in this particular video, we are not, I'm not in, uh, showing on how to install MSI Afterburner, which is what we're using to overclock the card. If you wish to, um, if you want to see a short video on how to install uh, MSI Afterburner and get the stats up on the screen, which you'll see in this video, then click on the link below. Also click on the link below for the, vi the original video um, on the AAA gaming that I have for $300, $350. Or you can go to my channel and you can click on, on the other videos I have in there uh, for, for gaming with Xeon system. So let's go ahead and uh, start overclocking the car. Okay, let's jump right into MSI Afterburner. Again, I'm not uh, showing how to install this and set it up. That, uh, there's a separate uh, link and video for that um, but what we are going to do here is we are going to use this for overclocking um, the other reason why we want to use MSI Afterburner and you'll see is so that we can have our stats displayed on the screen on our GPU temperatures the memory that it's using the megahertz it's using uh, the GPU's memory the CPU temperature the CPU memory uh, but when we first, this is the default interface of MSI Afterburner. I'm going to change this interface. Sometimes it can be a little daunting or overwhelming. So we're going to hit this uh, uh, settings icon right here. And this is the same thing I do, I uh, show when we go into the uh, installation. Um, so we're just going to go to the bottom skin right here. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to read. Um, again, this is all preference. So this is showing our current clock speed, our memory speed, or in megahertz. Um, we don't, we can't control the voltage in this particular card. It's locked us out. This is our our GPU temperature. So the things that we're going to change in here, though, is we're going to change this power limit. If this power limit isn't at 100, then go ahead and and you can use you can use the slider here or you can type in here if you type in here you just click in there and do 100 and then hit your enter key the, again this is not an in-depth in, uh, this is not an in-depth uh, demonstration on overclocking we are just o overclocking this uh, GTX 1650 Super so um, on the memory clock speed we're going to put that at 1500 which is the max and then our core clock speed we're putting this at 160 now if for some reason your card when you're getting a game and it doesn't work quite right or it kicks you out to the desktop then lower these settings um, you should be okay with these settings with this card but um, uh, one of the RX, I have an RX 580 where I overclocked it to a recommendation of another person and um, I could not run it at his recommendations. Uh, the reason being is that you have a whole bunch of 
companies that that uh, make these cards um, they contract with NVIDIA or AMD and they will sometimes uh, make it so uh, you can overclock the card higher um, than another manufacturer uh, making the card and so I had to lower my memory clock speed my core clock speed it would crash at his at what he'd recommended um, so so then once you have this if you want these are presets here and you can hit the save button you can choose one of these to save it the only reason why you'd want to do that is maybe you don't want it overclocked all the time and so instead of coming in here and changing these settings every time you can just go ahead and click on a preset um, and uh, and then then run it at that overclock um, if it were me I would always run this card overclocking it doesn't run that high uh, the temperatures stay really low I'm not messing around with the fan speed because uh, again even overclock this card runs fairly cool um, so now for it to accept these settings and even when you hit the if you come in here and hit your preset um, you have to hit the check mark now if you want this to be stay overclocked every time you reboot windows or go into a game you have to click this here and then windows will go, then this will go ahead and uh, run in overclock mode all the time you won't have to open up MSI uh, to run that so right now um, we've only set the settings for overclocking um, it has not the card has not accepted those settings yet until you hit this check mark we're not going to hit that check mark yet because we are going to go into uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Lower Cross Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we're going to see what our uh, average frames per second are running the built in bench in Lower Cross Tomb Raider. And so I'm just going to fast forward it until we get into the game. Okay, so now that uh, Lower Cross Tomb Raider is open, um, I want you to just notice the stats up here in the left hand top corner. Um, so our GPU temperatures, uh, 50 Celsius. Uh, it <clears throat> um, with the uh, GTX uh, 1650, um, this card, uh, this game is going to max out the card, so it's always going to be uh, GPU bound. Uh, our CPU temperature, oh, our megahertz here, and this this oh this GPU percentage will jump during the game. Just depends on which part of the game we're in. Uh, the megahertz will also uh, go up and down. Um, and then our memory, the, the memory that the card's using here, the megahertz that the car, the memory is running at, our CPU temperature um, usage, and our megahertz that the CPU is running at right now, the RAM that the game is using. Now, these all these uh, stats are going to change as we run the game, and we're just going to run the uh, self-bench in Laura Tomb Raider. So we're just going to options, display. If you've never ran that before, um, we're just gonna we're using the default high mode, and then of course we're running this in uh, 1080p. So we'll just go ahead and start the bench. So again, the reason why we're doing this is we just want to get a a frames per second average base before we overclock the card. And so we're gonna let this run through the self bench. I'm not going to show the whole um, self-bench. We'll go to the end. Uh, but again, uh, you'll notice up here now that frames per second counter at the very top, that's the built-in frames uh, percentage counter. Um, our frames per second counter that is built into Laura Croft Tomb Raider. And then uh, the D3, D12, that's the counter in MSI Afterburner. And then you'll notice our, our GPU temperature has, has gone up because we are now putting a load on the game. Um, <clears throat> and uh, again, the megahertz is going to jump around. Memory uh, on the card itself is going to jump around how much it's using. The CPU temperature, the CPU usage. Um, and then, of course, our RAM has jumped up to 8 gigs. And this is why you need at least 16 gigs of RAM. Or you should have 16 gigs of RAM for AAA gaming. Um, so we'll just go ahead and, and go uh, to the end of the uh, 
benchmark to take a look at what our average frame rate is for this benchmark. Okay, now that the bench is done running, uh, the benchmark is done running, we've got an average frame per second at 73. And so, again, all that we have to do is um, we just have to open up MSI or go back to MSI and we went ahead and set these settings here. So now we're going to just check the check mark and uh, that will apply our overclock settings so we'll check that and now we'll, we'll go ahead and run the benchmark again so if you're new to the channel and uh, first time seeing this again this is a supplementary video to one of my other videos um, if you've never seen F, uh, MSI Afterburner these stats on the screen um, I do have a separate video uh, that shows how to do that and it's my uh, my four tools or utilities that any gamer or content creator should should have and you can go ahead it, it, it's down in the link below uh, but let's go ahead and take a look the reason why we're running after the reason why we're running these stats here is because when you overclock a card it's gonna run uh, a little hotter and so what we want to do here is uh, this card is actually a pretty efficient card um, it runs anywhere between 65 and 70 degrees Celsius, um, even overclocked. The CP uh, and it will. Um, oh, before we go on to that, so again, the megahertz up here um, on the GPU, uh, it's going to vary from the 1900s to 20, uh, 2020 megahertz. The, the memory is there, the but the megahertz memory is changed to 7,500 megahertz instead of 6,000. Um, the CPU temperature when you the when you overclock a car uh, a GPU it will actually make the CPU work a little hotter or harder. So the temperatures on the CPU can go up a little bit as well uh, because you're throwing more uh, frames at the CPU for it to process as well. And so we're going to see the temperature on this CPU just go in the 50s, which is a great temperature. Um, and then, of course, our RAM usage, our computer RAM usage is there. And so we'll just go ahead and go to the end of this benchmark to see what our new average frames per second is. Okay, now that the uh, benchmark is done running, and uh, if you didn't catch that before, up in the uh, upper right-hand corner, average frames per second in green there, we went from 73 to 79, so we gained six frames per second higher. Um, and so, again, I, as I mentioned before, uh, when you overclock, it just depends on the game that you're in on how many frames per second or higher you're going to get. There's no uh, magic number that if you overclock you're going to get 5 or 10. Um, but sometimes, depending on how hard the game is, uh, you may only get 2 or 3 frames per second. But in this case we got 6. And so the other thing that I want to just show you... In Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, um, before I overclocked the card, I got 192 frames per second average, and this is um, this is with the running it in the ultra high mode in Rainbow Six Siege, um, and then after overclocking, I got 206 frames per second more, so 14 frames per second more by overclocking the card, and this is a card where. Uh, especially where we're trying to get AAA gaming frames per second up. Um, I have no problem overclocking this card. It runs really cool. It's really efficient uh, a card to run. But um, that is, that's all there is to overclocking. Okay, again, thanks for uh, coming to the channel. As I said, that's pretty easy to do. So have fun gaming and have a nice day. Now that was easy peasy.